Hey everybody, welcome to the show. Uh, we've got a special guest here. Uh, we have Christoph Hedges from Hedges Winery in Washington State, and we have our sales rep, Curtis Eaton. He is from Verity Wine Partners. Um, and so we're gonna let uh, we're gonna let Christoph talk a little bit about these two wines that we have from his his vineyard. Uh, there's the CMS Red, and there's the Hedges Red Mountain. Thank you. Um, yes. So uh, first to to give you a little bit of context and history, um, my family, uh, my parents, Tom and Anne Marie Hedges, were the first, um, I should say, winemakers uh, to really take the concept of, of what I call the geography concept of wine and promote wine based on where it's from and not what was in the wine. And for that reason, uh, we started selling a blend. Um, but in reality, we started selling a Washington State Columbia Valley AVA wine. Both these two wines that we're going to try today are Cabernet Merlot based blends which grow very well in Washington State uh, and in fact um, if you didn't know this we're about the same latitude uh, as Loire Valley Bordeaux kind of right in between so we're what I call that uh, northern latitude that sort of classic northern latitude style so we'll dive into these wines and, and we'll, we'll uh, do a neat comparison between what the Columbia Valley AVA has to offer versus what I call a more boutique uh, growing region, the Red Mountain Growing District. So if you don't mind, I'll, I'll pour the wine. Oh, sure. Yeah. All right, so this 2010 vintage um, is a Cabernet Merlot based blend. It has just a little bit of Syrah and uh, it's what I like to call in, in sort of geek terminology, a pre-AOC Bordeaux style wine. And what I mean by that is, uh, pre-mid-1930s, uh, before AOC regulation took place in France, uh, there was quite a bit of Syrah blended into Cabernet Merlot blend. So, so this is sort of a throwback, it's sort of an antique uh, style wine to, to what a, a, a French claret would have tasted like mm -hmm. uh, pre-AOC. And uh, I know that um, the red blends are so, well red and white blends are so popular now, nowadays, but you guys were one of the first in, uh, in Washington State, or the first? That's right. We were uh, the first commercial release of a, of, a, um, of, a, of a red blend and also a white blend, believe it or not, too. But the red blend was really what uh, uh, made our sort of claim um, in the region. And the reason for that is because it allowed us, uh, through necessity, to diversify what we had planted uh, because we have fairly big swings between summer temperatures and winter temperatures. So if it gets really, really cold, fruit on hillsides tend to survive much better than what grows in the valley. Well, what grows on a hillside in Washington State, predominantly, it's Syrah. And Syrah is, uh, again, a, a variety that's planted by necessity, not something that we thought would be something good to drink. Uh, so it's, it's kind of a, a Burgundian sort of philosophy where we planted it because that's what the geography told us to do. Okay, cool. Well, let's, try, let's try this. This is a 2010 vintage, uh, about 13.5% alcohol, and what I call uh, done in a very classic style. Um, it's not going to be weighty, but it's going to be very bright. It's going to be very transparent, uh, what I like to call uh, almost pleasingly raw. And so you get a really good sense of, of, that, of that, again, that northern uh, mm -hmm. latitude style wine. It's definitely, it's, it's sort of geared towards food. Absolutely, like absolutely, yeah. Any wine for me that has a lot of bright acid uh, tends to pair well with um, all sorts of dishes too. It's a dry wine. Mm -hmm. uh, there is not, uh, well, there's an imperceivable amount of residual sugar. Um, so the, the wine tends to, to really um, pair well with anything that has uh, good fats in yeah. it. Um, game dishes, meat dishes, pasta. Yeah, we, and we, we sell this, uh, this wine for about $12. And uh, there's also a white blend. That's uh, correct. A, a Chardonnay Sauvignon, well, Sauvignon Blanc Chardonnay Marsan. Marsan, okay, that's that correct. We also have about $12. All right, so let's go on to the next one. This is kind of uh, the flagship wine. This is correct, yeah, this is the flagship wine. Um, so this is gonna be really interesting because the big difference between uh, the Hedges Red Mountain and the CMS Red is, uh, well, not the name, but rather the geography of the wine. So 
This wine says Columbia Valley on it. This comes from the greater Columbia Valley region, which is a, is a massive swath of land. Uh, this comes from what I like to call a micro AVA. Very, very small. It's about 2,000 acres planted, uh, roughly 4,000 acre AVA, which seems like a lot, but it's not. You can actually walk around the entire growing region in about three hours. So the big difference in this wine is that it's grown on a hillside. Uh, it's kind of like an uplifted plateau and it has very uh, high pH soil and the berry size is very small. So what you get is a higher um, intensity of uh, extraction in this wine. Um, and it's the, in those tannins, uh, that skin, where you get the um, an anthocyanin, where you get uh, what I call the terroir zone in the wine. And so uh, because of that lower yield, you're getting a lot of those um, earthy flavors, those mineral components of the wine. Um, we get a lot of um, sort of sage uh, component to the wine as well, and uh, well, I get a little, little licorice, a little black licorice yeah, okay, as right. well. Yep, that's a very big characteristic of Red Mountain as well mm. too. So. And you can smell, and you can tell this has seen more time in oak. A little more time in barrel. This yeah. is about ten months in in, uh, in oak. Fifty percent new barrel, fifty percent neutral barrel, and it 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 sees a, sort of a mix between French and American, as well as Hungarian too. Wow. To kind of tie these wines in together, um, what what do you think a customer uh, drinking the wine gets from um, from an enjoyment perspective of, from a blend as opposed to a single varietal or mono varietal wine? I think when you put your mind into the context of a blend, uh, you have to think about more of the region in a general sense, um, which in a way can be more specific. So if if you if you Get rid of the notion of, of, of what is actually in the wine, but put your mind frame in the set of, I'm drinking a hillside wine from the northern latitude on the west coast with very high pH soil. And I know that's a lot to chew, but once you get experience in, in, in sort of understanding where these wines come from, that's when wine becomes very enjoyable. And that sort of leads into the next topic of, of, of how you buy a wine or, or why you buy a wine and how the media sort of gets involved okay but, yeah go ahead well I was but do you think do you think from a perspective of like complex do you, do you think you get greater complexity from blending your wines do you think you get more personality in your wines from having a blend versus a mono varietal wine well that's a very good question but I will say this right now on camera that the uh -oh. varietals are less important than the geography and here's one example with a mono varietal mm -hmm. that I can state so if I grew Cabernet Sauvignon on Red Mountain and I grew Cabernet Sauvignon on a beach in Washington State on the coast. Those two grapes, there's, those two wines will taste different. Why? Not because of the varietal, because of the location. So what does that say about the location? It says that the location is more important than the varietal. Okay, so the, the enjoyment of these wines derives from the fact that they come from Washington or Red Mountain versus Correct. what they are blended. Absolutely, of. absolutely. Yeah, and I will, I will stand to that till the day I die. <laughs> Makes, sense. Makes sense. Yeah. Okay, so uh, the other thing I wanted to touch on that uh, uh, your winery is, is all about is score revolution. Correct. Um, yes. Maybe you could, yeah, we'll get a little, little flyers here. A little bumper stickers. Uh, yeah, and, and what that says is, I don't hang out with people who drink 100 point wine. And yeah, it sounds kind of esoteric and, and uh, uh, sort of anti-snobby, but in reality, what the real meaning of that is, is there's no such thing as a perfect wine. And so how can you ever hang out with somebody who drinks perfect wine when there's no such thing as a perfect wine? Yeah. That's the real meaning of that. So if you ever see wines that have a score um, I think that's a great sort of beginning point you know that's it's a good first step into maybe okay I'll, I'll try this but then once you really dive into wine and you go deeper into the meaning um, it's more important to take the context of the region why does the wine taste like this okay if you eradicate the score and you compare for instance uh, a Gamay Beaujolais from uh, from a Gamay grown in, uh, let's say, Australia, oh, okay. yeah, uh, those two wines will taste different. Mm -hmm. Not one is better than the other, yeah, as sure a right. score would indicate. Right. Right. They're just different. Yeah. So the rating of a wine, I think, is, is, a, is, a, is a sloppy sort of generalization mm -hmm. of the quality. And, and Hedges is associated with score revolution, mm -hmm. as like many, are, many other wineries, mm -hmm. but in reality, 
this is sort of a, a rebellion um, to educate. Yeah. You know, right. not 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 to be a negative. We mm. want this to be a positive. Yeah. It's, well. it, and the taste of wine is so subjective. I, I've tasted ninety four point wines on my Thursday tasting, and and people are like. Yeah, they don't really like it, so it, it really just doesn't. And my biggest problem with the ratings, and they say they say it in the outline of what a rating is, is that yeah. one of the like up to ten points is color. Well, yeah. some wines that are great wines aren't inherently dark. Right. You know, a great Pinot Noir is not going to be extracted or rich. Yeah. You know. Uh, what about yeah. a what about a white wine? Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, what right. caramel oxidized. Uh, yeah. Oak aging only, because if yeah. you get something light and vibrant, then what do you do? You get yeah. a 80, and then people are like, mm, well, I guess maybe I should try the 90. Yeah, right. good. Well, um, definitely check that out at scorerevelation.com. Um, so that's, that's pretty interesting. So again, we uh, just to recap, we've got the, uh, the Hedges Red Mountain that we sell for about 21. We've got both of the CMS Red and White Blend, and then there's also the Independent Producers, which I'm a big fan of those. Yeah, the Independent sure. Producers, if you're really wanting to dive into very specific properties and at a lower price point too, um, get into those, uh, you'll impress your friends. Uh, the labels tend to be very esoteric, mm -hmm. uh, but what we're trying to do is describe the geography on paper. And our prices um, uh, are relative to the history of the geography. So one thing I want you to know, if we're a member of Score Revolution, uh, we do this because we want, our, our, we want our prices to be very, very transparent. We don't add any, what I call, uh, image margin to the wine. So very there you good. go. Okay, well, thanks very much for uh, joining us, and Christoph, thanks very much for coming. Thank in you. It's a pleasure. Time. And Curtis, thanks. Nice. Yeah, thanks for having us. See you next time.